Well, what we have here is a Fender Plus. Very special guitar. It has some lacy pickups, a rosewood neck, uh, three lacy pickups, beautiful guitar, uh, quite an expensive guitar too. You can't get them for under 1,500, 2,000 pounds. This needs a little bit of work. Uh, it's in good order. There's a tiny little ding at the back. Um, you probably can see it. No, maybe you can't see it, but it's just above there. There's a tiny ding. You can hardly see it. Overall, the guitar is in good condition. The problem that I have, you'll see in a second, but this is the back of the guitar and it's got the, in the serial number. But here's what my problem will be. Fixing this lacquer on the head. I can't strip the head because that logo is special because this is a special plus guitar and you can never get the logo the way it should be. There's holes in the lacquer, which I can't replace because we don't have the patches. So I'm going to have to bluff this up to stop it. It's going to look, I don't know, I don't know. I tried a drop of super glue, but it didn't work. So what I'm having to use, one of the problems you put super glue in there and you try to spread it, it doesn't, it doesn't spread. So what I'm, what I'm having to use is tight bond, which is much better because, let me just see, I got it wrong. But when, because when you put it underneath the lacquer, later, so when you, when you push down with your finger, it goes the whole way down into where the lacquer needs to go. Now I've got, I've got uh, water on my hand, which makes it smoother. And you see that if you can see that now, you can see that the the tight bond is in little veins there and it, it's wet there. But what you have to do, that will dry up clear. But what you have to do is hold up. I can't think of another way to do it except for hold it with your finger. Just that one little tiny spot until it gets dry enough and blow and blow and blow. That'll go clear. Uh, and then I move along in about 10 minutes to the next bit. So I'm going to let that run, but you can't see very much. Let me just see, it's not tacky yet, but it'll get tacky in a few minutes. And that's run down the depth. The tight bond has run down the depth of the loose lacquer. You see there's lacquer there. If I put tight bond there and I squeeze it, it goes up the distance. Uh, the only thing I haven't figured out yet is what I'm going to do to, to overspray this to stop it getting worse. But I'll come back to you when I've done a bit more. The white color is the color that the neck used to, this head used to be. But it looks like sunshine has done its damage. But it's also dried out the wood considerably. So all the varnish had flaked off. So the challenge was to stop the flaking from happening. This is not difficult. It's impossible. Let me just show you what I'm trying to do. There's bare wood beneath that and I can't get it to match. So I'm putting CA glue where the bare wood is to try to build up the layer of varnish because the varnish is missing where the bare wood is. And I can't strip this head. The problem is that every time you put it in the bare wood, the CA glue sinks into it. And what I wanted to do is build up enough that it won't sink into it. The problem with that is, oh, excuse me. The problem with that is that, uh, you can't let the CA glue dry too much or you'll have a sort of white effect and you've got to build up the layers enough to stop. Oh, sorry. It's very hard to do it with one hand. I'm going to stop now, but let me just see. I'm trying to build up a layer of gloss. Let me just take that lamp away, the magnifying glass. I'm trying to build up a layer of gloss and 
parts of the wood that are missing. Let me just show you. Sorry, it's just sniffing. Some CA glue makes me stiff. Sniff. That's the head of a needle. See, that's plain wood there, and that's plain wood there. I have to get a layer of gloss on it, and there's another bit of, let me just see, where are we? Where's that camera? Where's, where's that camera lens? And there's more wood in there. And there's another plain, bit of plain wood. Where are we? Where's that lens? Where's it? There, right there. That's plain wood. What I'm trying to do is get a layer of CA glue on top of it. Oh, excuse me. And whenever it dries solid, then I'll start scraping away and polishing and things like that there. So I think, I think I've got them all, but I can't do it with the camera in the hand. So I'll just have to double check. Okay, ciao. Right, tuner time. Lovely self-locking tuners. Good quality type. Doesn't say what make it they are, but I'm sure somebody knows. I don't. So I'm only going to put one on now and uh, then I'll put the rest on with the magic of cinema. So, right, take that off. Unscrew that. I should do the camera the other way, but I don't have room. Unscrew that. Stick that on there, Nate right, Love. Right, stick it on there. It fits down firmly and presses. Right, see a little self-locker. Locks the strings. And then this how simple that is no nonsense that goes on that and this goes over the top of it and so such a simple but the high quality because you can tell I'll tighten that up later whenever I need to tighten up but not before but you see look how simple that is good 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 god in heaven that's brilliant no big deal just screwing down the heads not over tightening them I have a little wrench here that just make sure you don't little wrenchy screwdriver type thing. Get them in any cheap shop. Don't over tighten. You don't want to damage the threads, but also you don't need to over the tighten them because they're they're good little things. Right. And if you use one of those, you're not damaging each side with a spanner. You're guaranteeing that it fits all six sides of the nut so you're not going to put too much pressure on the sides to damage them okay strings next well here we go chops and chassesses chop asses we're going for the final setup this guitar is all but finished this is the guitar that i had to fix the head stop the lacquer from coming off i oh, see future problems maybe coming here Mm, we just have to deal with them when they, they start. Let me, let me just see. Oh. Here we go again. Off they come. The heads. The my heads pick the heads. My ass heads. I don't mean the heads. I mean the tuners. Tuners. Lovely tuners, I've already said that. But I wish they were staying on the guitar instead of coming off again. Once I do this, I will then start to glue down the, 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 the what I can glue down and then try to spray it with like lacquer. I don't know why it's come up. Maybe the oil I put on it has made the lacquer. I don't know what. what Oh, what's this? Well, it's me just clicking. Uh, not my wrists, the, 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 the guitar. Right, so as I say, maybe the oil that I put on the guitar, because I didn't varnish that. I oiled it with the special guitar finishing oil. And maybe the oil has highlighted the things and got underneath the loose lacquer. But it has to have a fix. It can't go back to the customer and only to come back in another year's time with bits missing. So I'm going to have to do it. Well, it'll never be 100% until we have to strip the whole head, but at the, prob the longer we can keep that going, I think if we can glue these down and make them look more respectable, then 
then I'll, yeah, they will go down again. But how I get glue underneath them is another thing. Okay, back again. Like Mr. Magoo. You see my glasses? I'm going to have to find a way, I'm using a needle, to lift or make a, a slice. Because I don't actually think, even though the lacquer is lifted, I don't actually think it's split. So you have a, a lifted lacquer there, but it's sitting like a dome, so I'm going to have to slice open the dome somehow, get glue underneath it and put it back down again without making a whole unholy mess. And now that I have the heads off, I'm seeing another bits of lifted lacquer everywhere. But what I'm my what I think I'm only able to do is do the major ones. The ones that I can see clearly. Hopefully I'll be able to do the major ones that I can now see. There 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 they're about ten or twelve. And then when I put the hard lacquer over it, it'll just seal mm -hmm any further opening. I could put the lacquer over it now, but that would leave it so you can see this. Uh, do you know something? I think seeing that is not going to be, seeing those little dents is not going to be as awful as opening them, putting glue onto them and sealing them again, because that's what half the problem was over here. Was you, the missing lacquer shows things, so I think I don't think I'm going to glue it now that I've looked at it closely. I think I'm going to put lacquer over it and try to hold it in place so that it doesn't spread anymore. I see a little bit of lacquer missing here, but I think that might have been from the time that I had the just a truss rod. So I'll fix that. I can fix that easily. And I think I'll give it another sand before I do anything more, but not sand these because I don't think I want to open them up. No, because I, 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 t I tap on each side and each side's connected to the other. So, uh, although, what can you do, you know? What can you do? I don't think there's anything else you can do without making a bigger mess. All right, okay. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Ask me if this is tedious. Just ask me. You'll get an answer. What I've done, because I found little threats of the lacquer rising. There were the sort of more threats. Little bubbles, tiny hairline bubbles were rising in the lacquer. But the little bubbles weren't pierced. So I would have had to pierce the bubble, put glue in and squeeze it. And that would probably make the thing look even messier. So what I've decided to do, I put three or four coats so far of sanding sealer on it after repairing the uh, lacquer as best I can without bursting it. I put three or four coats of sanding sealer and that seemed to have done a good job but now I'm going to have to put another coat of cellulose clear lacquer on top which is satin finish but if I do that without getting this perfectly smooth then you'll see little lumps. So what I'm doing now is I'm using wet and dry 2000 sandpaper and sanding down it to make sure that there's not even a hint. Well, I'm doing my best to make sure as best as I can without spending the rest of eternity doing this uh, to get the head as smooth as possible. Uh, when I put the sanding sealer on it, it looked lovely and gloss. This is not supposed to be a gloss head though. It's uh, but But if the if the cellulose clear a satin finish doesn't look right, I'll sand it and I'll actually put gloss on it. But that would cause another delay because I don't have any gloss in. And, but uh, this is supposed to be matte. So let's just see what it looks like. Now, I think I'm almost there. I'm doing with 2000 wet and dry. And I'm doing it liberally with wet and dry because when you put a coat of wet on it, you can actually see the, the 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 lumps better on the surface, so you know better where you need the sand, but also it helps the sandpaper as well. So there's a double bonus in that. Okay, I'm sure you're bored seeing me sand, 
The next thing you'll see is me doing a little can of spray, because I don't have a big fancy spray booth. A little can of spray, spraying a... a, a God, my, my tongue. I have, I've only had one cup of coffee this morning, so don't blame me. Don't blame me. Okay, we'll be doing the gross next. I think I've done enough sanding. All right, okay. Ciao, 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 ciao. Okay, Clever Clogs created his own little spray booth. And he's already done the spraying because I can't do spraying with just one hand. But I sprayed satin on it and it's looking mighty nice. The problem is now that this stink in the air. So I'll have to find a better way to spray next time. Now you're looking over my shoulder. So I hope you don't... Uh, your breath's nice. Right, as you can see, these frets are clean. And those, sorry, the fretboard there is clean and the frets are polished. A little bit more to do. But that one is doity. And I'm going to show you how to get it clean like that. But be very careful, right? Because you need a little blade, a little blade, right? And you start just below the fret, not too much pressure, and you scrape down and you take off a hair's breadth but you'll see the difference. Go, go at an angle. See why I'm going at that angle. I'm not going straight or chunky. I'm going down there, no pressure, and then down. And then I'm taking the hair's breadth off the fretboard. But I'm also taking off all the gunk and everything that's been there for the years. So you can hear it scraping. Don't be too afraid of it. Because you're taking it back down to natural wood again and getting rid of all that grease and grime and dirt and grime and grease in just a minute mr clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it have you ever heard of that have you and then in there gently that's where all the gunk's going to so you just gently don't use the brush don't use this the, the thing too hard down in there because you don't want to leave any lines there's just little bits of junk there you see the dust the dust from there and that gives you a nice clean fret now you can see I could even go deeper if I wanted to but I don't want to you see the difference between there and there if I go deeper I would remove the lines which is fine but I don't need to because that's pretty now then I would stick on some oh some lemon guitar lemon oil so I'm just going to do this I wouldn't do it now normally but I'm doing it just for the camera because I'm a show off and uh, you put that on. I'm not getting into the corner with my finger, so I'll use the, the pad to get into the corner. And what you have, uh, I'll do that again later on because I'm not getting right up to the top. But as you can see, your rosewood looks like rosewood again. And you can see the difference between the three. Cleaned, but not oiled. Oiled, but not and not cleaned. Purdy, ain't it? Uh, just take that off as much as you possible. You need to oil your frets maybe once a year, whether your guitar is sitting in storage or not. If your guitar is sitting in storage and you think it's a good idea to loosen your strings, then straighten your neck. If you know about these things, if you've got five or six guitars just sitting there and never played and you don't want to put strain in your neck, loosen your strings but also make your neck straight because the truss rod is going to give it a little bit of a bow. It's going to make it bow like that. So if you straighten it out, when you go to play it again, it just means giving you a little bit of a bow. But if you don't, if you take the strings off and leave it like that, the pressure is going to be on the strings and go like that there. And you might have a permanent neck sitting like that. And then you have a little bit more hassle, but keep, make your neck straight. If you're going to put it into any sort of long-term storage, all you have to do is tune up the guitar and give it a tweak with the truss rod to get it back to game. All right, ciao, bye, bass. It's wonderful. And if I wanted to go a little bit further, see what I got here? Scratch remover paste. Can you see that? Let me just see. Scratch remover paste. Focus. Focus on the hand. It doesn't want to focus. It is scratch remover paste. Anyway, if I wanted to go a little bit, it's messy. Don't like it, but uh, I could. And scratch remover paste gives you a very, very high polish 
on your car and on the guitar. I sound like a poet, don't I? So a little bit of scratch remover paste on it. Just give it a little push and clean it all off so you don't just give it a little. It's a very, very fine. I think it goes up to 3000 grit, this scratch remover paste. It does have a little bit of a grit removal in it, but it does a lovely job, like a lovely job. Okay. And let's see. That's beautiful, beautiful. But I bet you can't tell the difference, so, but I can. It looks, it looks brand spanking you. All right, clear enough. Boy, bye, 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 bye. Mm, this is interesting. All the little string height gauges are completely. Let me just see. Can we just get them? Yeah, it looks like they're rusted. Let me just see. Yeah. Can't adjust the string heights very well. I think if you can get if we can get replacements be much better because I think that one's completely rusted in. It's gonna be interesting to see. Anyway, I'll keep digging. I did better with one with two hands, but uh, yeah, this could be and you know, it, it's possible it could be, you know, the, the uh, people wearing with the skin of their hands scraping into these little rough edges. You could find that that's all sort of gunk and skin and everything like that there. But, you know. Anyway, I'll keep working at it and let you know how the result is. My air soldering iron set at 500 degrees. Trying to get the last screw out of the last tensioner, heating it up to 500 degrees. They were jammed in. I just managed to get one out. You can see the rusty hole. Now, just one more to go. If I could just get that one, we'll have new screws on order. Fingers crossed. Three days, the last one's loose. Thought that would never fix. I think I've destroyed a set of pliers, but I've got that one out and new screws. Little bastard. Gave me so much trouble. Taking three hours to get that screw out. And it was only with the help of my hot air soldering gun that I did it. Well, here we are again. All jolly good friends and jolly, what is it? Here we are again. Happy as can be, all good friends and jolly good company. Ha <laughs> ha! It's apple juice, by the way. It's apple juice. Right. We have this guitar. Should be the last time on this bench, I hope. We have the frets all nicely polished and the fretboards all nicely cleaned and oiled. The head has been repaired, which you can't see too much. It had flaking off lacquer but I'll not go into that because it's in the video now what what we're doing now I've loosened all these screws but I haven't taken them off yet because we've got brand new fender genuine part screws to replace them with because these are all tarnished and also with the pickups I've got brand new fender parts now I am waiting for a set of screws for the I don't think you'll see this but I'm waiting for these screws to come they're the little height control screws, which go into these, right? And they go at the end of the guitar for adjusting the height of the string at the bottom, right? They haven't come yet. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug it in for the very first time. This is the very first time it'll be plugged into an amplifier. Go plug it in for the first time. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's not no noise plugging it in. What do I need? I need a screwdriver. Right, okay. All right. Volume up. Volume up. Is that pickup's working? Middle pickup's working? Back pickup's working. Beautiful. Let's see what... No sound, no sound. No crackling. 
oh, this is this, this is a split tone pickup, so it's working fine. Right, so that means the electrics seem to be all working fine. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. Electrics working fine, no noise. I'll give it a little clean inside anyway. But what I'm going to do now is switch off the amplifier. Take another drink of apple juice. Cheers. And stick on these little without. I'm going to put these on without the screws. Just like that. Because I can use a couple of the damaged screws. They're not too damaged to set the two outside strings. So we'll do that now. Uh, each of these springs that are going on these things are different sizes. I don't know where you can see these things. Can you see those things there? The screws that go on the end of these little machines here that make this push, let me just see, not there, push back and forth, help you give the intonation, uh, are different sizes. So we have to make sure we put the right spring on the different sizes. So there, put this the little thingy. I'll come back to you whenever I've done all that. But that's all going to be adjusted. All right. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Okay. So next at the right angle now. I had to put a little bit of a bow on it because it was far too straight and it was buzzing down here. I went to replace the screws because we got nice new screws. Where are they? Nice new fender screws. Oh, they're here somewhere. Nice new fender screws. So all I had to do, take the screws out. Yay! Put them back in. But no. This one here has got tension on it, which means that inside it's jammed. It's got some sort of rust. Everything else is working beautifully. And now what have I got? I've got a pick guard that's stuck. And pick guards are fragile. And so the pick guard is stuck onto the board. And so what's happening? It's stuck down. And I'm not going to force it. It's obviously years of uh, years of gunk, maybe even bits of beer floating down the inside. All right, okay. Oh, look, that came off. Lovely. So we we'll have to gently, because I don't want to start soldering any wires. You'll see it in a second when I bring it out. So it's going to have to be repaired. <sighs> Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Why did they do that, I ask you? Why did I show you what they did? That's what they put. Can you see that? Look. That's what they put instead of a spring. They put that beneath the... to raise and lower the pick. pick. Or the, the, oh, my head's not working today. Raise and lower the pickup. So they're all rubber. They're all rubber. It's not broken, but what a crap idea. Instead of a bit, little bit of spring, they have rubber. Anyway, no point in boring you through this. I'll fix that and adjust it. Nothing exciting in there to see. So I'll replace all the screws and let you see them when they're finished. All right. Ciao, bye. Yes, yes, yes. I'm still complaining. Little rubber grommets. Who ever thought of that? Fender sometimes need a good kick in their rear end. Yes, I know the guitar is 30 years old, but putting perishable rubber grommets on, and they're still doing that today. It's crazy. Put a little bit of sta stainless steel spring on or something that's going to last. I've managed to get those fixed. I'm still not happy about having to use them, but I'm, they're fixed now. But they had to be super glued. They had to be special. Had to put special grease on them to make sure they don't jam again. Ah, Fender. Fender do some really good stuff, but then they do some stupid stuff completely, like to save a few pennies, putting some rubber grommets in. Yes, they work. But they only work for a certain length of time. Stop complaining, Austin. Right, so that's them. 
that's the, the screwed on back again. Now I just have to just a second. You notice I can't get those clean. I don't want to play with them too much. But it's a, it's a 30 year old guitar, so why not let it show a little bit of age. I probably could take them off and clean them and get them up to shiny white or whatever the hell, you know. I have to laugh sometimes. I see people, you see that bit of the pick guard there, which was dirty. It wouldn't come off and underneath there. And people get special sprays and special glues and special everything to do them. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing better than a little bit of light soapy water and a, a, a nice clean dry tissue to get it off. Anyway, there we are. That's the pick guard, nice and back together again. And I'm going to give it a bit of a clean before I put it completely back together again. But uh, there you go. And all the holes have to be cleaned out, brand new screws put in. So now I should be able to go away and leave you piece and then come back and let you see the finished job. Goodbye. I'm going to fall out with you if you don't focus. Thank you. If you're not focusing still, that's it. But there you are, nice and shiny. That's how many cotton buds it took to get the the dirt out of the holes. But we're done. Well, I can finally say goodbye. Just needs cleaned up, polished up a bit. I can finally say goodbye to my Fender Plus. It's been a lovely guitar. Had a lot of work to do with the head to get the, get the lacquer. That was the job that it came to me for, to try to stop the lacquer peeling off. And it's It's okay. It's... Without, without stripping the head completely, it looks pretty good. Uh, lovely tuners, uh, what do you call them, self-locking tuners, you can lock them at the back and they're the best type to have. The guitar itself is all nicely tuned up. If only I could play as well as this guitar deserves. This is the uh, back. And sharp. And then the front pickup, nice. You're being gentle. tremolo boosts and all sorts of fancy stuff that you can do. I haven't got a clue quite to be honest. But it also has a trem setter and a trem setter is a thing that locks your tremolo so as you keep your tune. The trem setter was out of the guitar uh, but I've reinstalled it back in again and set it so it seems all pretty good. And the intonations, well, it's there's no such thing as perfect intonation, but it's pretty good. I'd like to keep this guitar. I can't. It's not mine. So say goodbye. Goodbye.